Walmart presents Be Ready for the Office Coffer. Every office has one, that awesome guy who's so committed that he comes to work even when he's sick. So you get to share much more than just email. Be prepared with three packs of 75-count Clorox disinfecting wipes for $9.97, twin packs of 250-count Spring Valley Vitamin C for $9, and 24-count Tylenol cold and flu severe caplets for $6.48. Walmart shopper one, coughing guy zero. Save money, live better, Walmart. Blog Talk Radio. Uh... Heaven is love. Heaven is so strong and profound that it doesn't have the same barriers of accessibility that other places have. It does have some barriers, though. We can only travel so far into the brilliance of creation with a physical-based vehicle before that brilliance would cause damage to the body. One gets little flashes of this with the Kundalini. It's difficult to stay here on this world when encompassed with bliss. Even with very small amounts given from the Kundalini, the body can convulse with joy to the point of obliteration. Heaven is stepping into the brilliance of creation. This brilliance is a tangible form of love. So know this and be with this and welcome to this conversation about your Kundalini awakening experience. My name is Chrisom and I would like to... uh, Welcome, first of all, everybody in the chat room here. I see Julie, and I see Julia, and I see Fashji, and MJ, and Steve, and Suka. Hello, everybody. And without further ado, I would like to welcome uh, the queen of questionable comforts, Miss, Mrs. Amelia Santara O'Connor. Hello, Amelia. Hello, Chrism. Um, I see I'm the queen of questionable comforts again this week. <laughs> <laughs> You're back to that. <laughs> I have that status returned. Thank you. <laughs> it's wonderful to be here as always. And if I could just tell everybody in the chat room that I don't have access to the chat room this tonight um, or today. So I'm unable to see the questions, but I think you can, Chrism. So, so type in anything that um, you would wish to ask, and Chrism um, will see it there, hopefully. <laughs> so I'm sorry I can't help you with that, Chrism, um, tonight. So That's okay. I um, understand. You have unique circumstances there today. Yes, Can indeed. I? So... Um, I'll begin. <laughs> I will begin by again giving everybody the address that um, they can go to if they want to support the Kundalini Awakening Systems Program and Prism and the work that he does for people who are going through a Kundalini Awakening process, for people who are looking for information about the Kundalini. Um, this address is www.ascension kundalini.blogspot.com and in the upper right hand corner you will see a donate button and from that point on it's quite easy to donate as I always say there is no pressure on anybody to donate I give this information because I regularly am asked you know how can a person donate and people um, want to have this information and of course um, I feel it's very important to give this information as this is, you know, the only means really where Chrism receives financial support. He doesn't actually charge for anything that he does. And so um, that selfless service is there for everybody, for everybody um, who comes and looks for information and comes to teaching. So with deep gratitude to Chrism for this selfless service to the Kundalini and to everybody who um, the Kundalini brings to this information. So if you're in a position to support this work, please do so. And if you are not not able to, um, 
blessings to you too. I'm going to just give that um, address again. It's www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And again, if you just Google Ascension Kundalini Blogspot, the address will come up for you. So that's, that's my announcement, Chrism, and I'm very much, as always, looking forward to the show and what will unfold and the teachings that you will have for us today. Well, thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Amelia. But I would like to say, for those of you that have attended a seminar, you know that you had to pay to get into that seminar. And I have to reiterate again that these payments go towards the putting on of the seminar. Um, I am allowed to, to, to do a seminar. I'm allowed to teach. I'm allowed to give Shakti Pot. I cannot charge for Shakti Pot. Uh, the only thing that the Kundalini allows me to take donations for are the teachings. Everything else goes into overhead, and advertising is a huge cost, uh, as Eileen or Rosemary or uh, EDG, Elizabeth Dalton Gonzalez, they may tell you that. It's, it's not, it's, it's, that is actually one of the biggest costs there is in putting on a Kundalini Awakening seminar, letting people know that this is coming to them and this is available to them, and so... We and do. prison, there's yes. slights and things. There's a lot of overheads that need to be covered because, like, when you come to Europe, that doesn't happen by magic. So that has to be covered too, you know. You, you, I mean, you don't quite tra- tell. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, so people know that, you know, especially those who've taken the seminars, such as, as Julia and Elizabeth Alton Gonzalez and, and um, you know, some of the other folks, it, uh, it, you know, it costs. Uh, Rosemary, bless her heart, you know, she has, she has sequestered the same wonderful hotel that we uh, used uh, for the last Minnesota seminar, and we're going to be going there again uh, in, in, in the, the third week of February. So looking forward to that as well. And, uh, and Elizabeth Dalton Gonzalez, uh, has put together a seminar event in in um, Washington State at a port a place called Port Townsend. It's in a castle at Port Townsend, and uh, that that is going to be a very you know interesting seminar as well. And we, I believe that there's some interest in putting on a seminar in London. And Magdalene de Deus is organizing uh, a seminar in Switzerland. And this will be done in one of those Swiss chalets, which, which you know, they're very beautiful, very beautiful countryside, beautiful people. And, of course, Magdalene is just loaded with grace, and she, she spreads that freely, as does Amelia. So and if anybody would like to participate in those venues, please uh, contact me at kfireforall, K-F-I-R-E-F-O-R-A-L-L, at yahoo.com. Let's go ahead and begin. I read to you a little bit about heaven and how it is such a powerful, powerful, powerful uh, level of energy that one of the things that, that we have to transform into, we have to transform our physical being. And, and I was just reading about this yesterday. Let me see if I even have it here. I went, no, I don't. Uh, somebody has compared me to a person named... Apollonius of Tirana, or Tirana, and this this person was on an ascension format, an ascension platform, meaning that his work and his kundalini and his connection with the divine uh, transformed his body, uh, dematerialized it to the point where he he ascended into heaven taking the body with him. There was no, there were no remains for this person. And this person lived at the same time as, as Jesus Christ and was a contemporary, actually. They both met. Uh, but he was another person uh, who, who really uh, uh, followed, if you read any of the writings of, of Apollonius of Tirana, uh, basically he was doing the same thing Jesus was, just in different areas. You know, as, as as the Bible says, the Christian Bible says, uh, Christ says to to the people, says, "These things I do, you can do and more." Well, Apollonius of Tirana was doing that. 
and more. And so, so was John the Baptist. So, you know, a lot of people uh, were were in that area at that time and are in this area at this time too. Okay, you need to understand that just because that happened two thousand years ago doesn't mean that oh everything just stopped for two thousand years and here we come up to the present. No, it never stopped. It never stopped. It just became less, shall we say, less um, ob- observed. It became it became more dangerous to do such things so that you know your uh, your life would have been in jeopardy if you were to. to uh, to demonstrate miracles uh, during the uh, Spanish Inquisition, for instance, or uh, some of there were some miracles that were shown uh, by the Merovingian dynasty, the witch kings of the Merovingians, and they had long hair and they knew about honeybees and they knew about Kundalini. Okay, and so this has continued uh, since before the time of Christ, way before. You know, we're talking about the Tua de Danan. We're talking about the the Furblog, we're talking about the um, Melosians, we're talking about the Parthenonians, that these were the people that just inhabited Ireland and Spain and Great Britain and parts of France, the Brittany area of France, as well as other, uh, other areas. And so the Kundalini expression has been constant uh, within the, uh, shall we say, the European races, as well as some of the uh, Races that went down uh, with, you know, with certain continents that uh, that were enveloped by, a, you know, a, a, a geological upheaval. So Kundalini is continuous within our expression, and so don't be surprised that you have it or that you have come across a person who has it. The problem these days is so many people want to have it that they begin to to fabricate. Unawareness. They begin. They begin to fabricate having kundalini. They begin to to design and to to uh, to 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 be inauthentic in their expression and their you know their and their desire to be known for something. You know, basically an ego based uh, a scenario. And some of them, you know, were absolutely right on. Ramana Maharshi, Yogananda, Sri Ram, Sri uh, uh, Aurobindo, Ram, Ramakrishna—I think I mentioned him. Uh, Vivekananda, you know, the, and all these guys were at the beginning of the last century. You know, uh, Yogananda—I think he died in the fifties. Um, it's not common since uh, Yogananda really to to be in the presence of a Kundalini awakened master, except for Gopi Krishna. Uh, Gopi Krishna uh, definitely had an awakening, and he's the one that really brought it into the Western world. If you want to read a book about what not to do within a Kundalini awakening, well, read Gopi Krishna's book of uh, Kundalini and the the evolutionary energy in man. You can get that on Amazon, and that's just a that's a description of how bad it can go, how it can almost you know really just kill you. If you resist and resist and resist, as Gopi Krishna, not having a teacher, just having the Kundalini itself, but not wanting to listen to it, you know, letting his ego take the uh, take the uh, the control away from the, his inner divine, you know, that can be a deadly equation. And, and I would suggest nobody do that. Nobody, certainly not, you know, anybody who's listening to us right now. I would like to ask the chat room folks. Uh, Julie, Julia, Fashji, Lorne, MJ Henderson, Steve, and Suka, how is the sound quality? Could you just type it out there? I'm looking here right now at the uh, at the uh, chat room here, and if you could, oh, good, thank you, Lorne, thank you very much. It's always been an issue, as as some of you who have followed this program for a while, you know that we're not always uh, spot on with the technology. <laughs> so, and you'll hear my chair squeaking a little bit too. I got a squeaky chair. Uh, so, uh, w- it's important for you to begin to to discern the truth from the lie. Okay, discerning the truth from the lie is one of the most important attributes that the Kundalini brings, and it's it is that which brings uh, it brings out the the frightening aspects of of your early Kundalini awakening 
that's what that's what the entities are about a lot of the time is, you know, first of all, you know, even to see an entity, you know, have a head pop out of the wall, that just freaks you out alone. That alone, you know, will send you straight to the emergency room, straight to the psych ward if you see a head come out of your bedroom wall and then stare at you or start talking to you. That, <laughs> you, know, that's, you know, that's, you know, uh, that can really rock your world, absolutely rock your world and and that alone. And then, but what, if you start, if you get through that, which, you know, you will, you will get through that, uh, having knowledge, having information is power over the fear that you may feel. Um, but as you get through that and you start listening to what they say, you can begin to discern the truth from the lie. Some of them are very, very obvious uh, in, in their manipulations towards anti-ethical or unethical, Im- immoral actions, activities, or ideologies. And this goes straight up with the uh, with E.T. as well. E.T. is very interested in Kundalini, and we're having a discussion right now in one of the secret groups. Uh, E.T. is very, very, very interested in Kundalini, and uh, whether, you know, the, some of them may have a, a matrix type of siphoning, uh, uh, you know, like, a, like an entity would, a spiritual entity would. Uh, some of them are trying to use it to augment their own technology, you know, creating, creating wormholes or, you know, things of that nature. Uh, but for the most part, divinity is looking at you, my friends. Divinity is looking at you and how you respond. The more trust you have in your kundalini. Forget about entities. Forget about ET. Really, the only focus that you want to have is on the divine expression within you. And the positive, positive levels of surrender that you can give into that divine equation that you are part of now. You are being built and developed into a bridge between the mundane and the divine. And that takes a very, 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 very strong level of surrender for a person to to even begin to engage in that. And talking a little bit about that on the uh, some of the Facebook groups, and I'd like to go ahead and go through the groups right now. We have a Kundalini Awakening exclamation point. We have Kundalini Awakening Systems 2, Kundalini Healing on the Facebook network. We have Kundalini Healing and Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 on the Yahoo network. We have Kundalini Awakening uh, exclamation point on the Google Plus network. We have uh, chrism.kundalini on the YouTube network. That's about 304 videos. And I'll strongly suggest that anybody that's really serious about this, you'll watch every single one of those videos. Do not skip them. Go back and watch some twice. If you're having a dark night soul, look at the DNS videos. If you're having issues with grieving because you've lost a loved one, then look at the grieving issue. Look at how Kundalini begins to re- react with you in your real-life world. This is a real-life thing, folks. You're not crazy. You have kundalini. Okay? So, uh, I would like to go ahead and welcome Her Holiness, Amelia Centara, back onto the, uh, into the red zone, the Shakti zone, because she is such a red Shakti girl. There she is. Hello. Hello, Prism. As following our previous uh, uh, arrangements that we've been doing on the last few shows, I'd like you to go ahead and and ask some of the questions that you've uh, that you've been able to collect from the various. Okay. Now, well, you-, you you mentioned there, you know, about how important it is to not let ego take control away from the divine, and how it requires from us a very strong level of surrender. And you you actually on the group there was one of your teachings there about is your ego ready and how the ego doesn't really know about how to surrender. And so there was um, a great um, conversation that occurred with people sharing about that. Um, And towards the end of it, there was a question asked that um, I would like to just put out now, Chrism, for you to maybe speak about here. It said, 
in getting rid of the old patterns of, of behavior, is this what Kundalini plays the most part in? Is this how the transformations take place? Does Kundalini kill off the patterns from within the nervous system? Well, I, I, I really, you know, in the context of the Kundalini, I never use the word kill because, you know, once again, Amelia, you're, you're um, echoing now. Put you over here. Back into the Shiva blue. Yeah, yeah. So in the Kundalini context, I, I rarely uh, mention the word kill or destroy or, or uh uh, you know of that of that uh, quality with regards to the ego. The ego is is very similar to our inner child, our inner six year old, and we don't kill our six year olds. We just teach them a better way to to express themselves. And so this is certainly what what I am suggesting that a person do within with regards to. Um, breaking through uh, the patterns that are within the consciousness, that not so much the nervous system. It's not so much about the nervous system. Nervous system is literally a, it's a wiring of the body. It's, it's, it's how the body is wired. It's not so much uh, a, 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 a container of consciousness. Consciousness uses it to, to allow the body to feel and to sense and things of that nature. But the, the, the nervous system itself is, is a is conscious, but it's, it's part of the of the physical bodies of energetic distribution within the human system. And so, yeah. So part of the transformation uh, is is really about replacing patterns, and you know. Versus, you know, there are I have students right now who are deeply, deeply involved in repatterning themselves uh, through surrender uh, and, and, th and, and through, you know, obedience to the Kundalini and through obedience to to that inner divine and, and to some degree to obedience to the to the uh, flesh teacher as well. And it's these levels of giving and levels of surrender that really, really, really begin to alter and replace the, the current five-body uh, menu of the ego-based uh, desires and expectations and attachments and, and uh, you know, expressions of, of those lower chakra levels, which is what Lasha is is communicating to me right now. She wants out and the door is wide open, so I'm not quite sure what she wants me to do. So it's just you'll just have to go on your own, my dear. And so, you know, with this in mind, Kundalini will ask you to go far beyond what would what you would normally do uh with regards to surrendering to to itself within you and to your flesh teacher. Um Far beyond, far beyond, far beyond. Uh, just a second here. Okay, little one. Yes, I know. Here, here we go. We're not going to play this game right now. Okay, all right. I literally have to block the door. Okay, so, you know, surrendering within this context will take you far beyond what you would normally do uh, within societal acceptance, I mean, it's way beyond that. Way beyond that. It goes far into more primal areas. It goes far, far further into a repatterning, a reprogramming of of uh, how you interact with life, how you interact with yourself, how you interact with the idea of divinity, how you interact with the idea of you becoming a semi-divine individual, how you begin to interact with other people with regards to service, with love, with, with compassion, with forgiveness. You know, these are the hallmarks of enlightenment. These are the, are the, are the patterns that will replace the, the patterns of fear, of grudges, of hate, of easy anger, of uh, greed, of, you know, of fear of loss and want of gain. These are the patterns that will be replaced. 
Uh, and the Kundalini will reward a person for these efforts. I mean, you definitely feel a huge, huge, huge level of connectivity with the Kundalini. For instance, one student uh, just uh, yesterday, uh, you know, this is a person that is is uh, is inside of the political uh, arena, and this person is, you know, running for office and and uh, went on to a website where where you could you can go there incognito, you know, like a like a troll. You can go there incognito, and you can kind of like say what you want to say about any of the candidates. And you know, they found that the, the people were were uh, saying bad things about about this this person. And and at first, the person was was absolutely crushed by the negative tone of of the individuals that were saying this or that about them. And immediately, immediately, the Kundalini shot freezing cold energy into that person's system. And this, uh, as many of you may know, is a sign of the sacred feminine. It's a sign of the sacred feminine. And and as that shot in to that person's awareness and, and tactile feeling, uh, the person realized that, oh my gosh, you know, Shakti Kundalini is hearing this and, and reading this and 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 the and the kundalini knows how I'm feeling, and and that I need not be upset over this. I need not be afraid of this. I need to just trust the kundalini. And as soon as that person began to to understand that quality, a a delicious warmth, loving warmth of acceptance came through that person's physical system. This is just one example about how the kundalini will definitely let you know in no uncertain terms that it is listening and it is paying attention and it is watching you and it is assisting you and it is helping you. It is, it is walking hand in hand with you as you go through some of these, these re-patterns, these, you know, reprogramming your physical system. And so it's very important for you to, to understand how that is working and how that is evolving within you. And as you surrender more and more and more into the process with the kundalini on the inside and with your flesh teacher on the outside, so you have that which is within is so without and that which is without is so within, so you're being supported in both directions, the up and the down, the outside and the inside. Uh, so it's a multi-directional support system that a person can have if they, you know, if the kundalini is activated or awakened within them and they have a a flesh teacher that also has active kundalini. Um, it's a very strong level of support. And even though with that level of support, you have your own decisions that you have to make. You have your own levels of interaction with that kundalini, interaction with that flesh teacher that allows you to make the best choices for yourself if you are willing to go there. The more you surrender into this equation, the greater the gifts of this equation is going to be given to you. Greater levels of confidence, greater levels of strength, get greater levels of health, greater levels of understanding some of the, uh, the most diverse and most inexplicable equations that, that, that haunt humanity. Uh, the Kundalini will just clear it right up. But you've got to give into this equation. You can't just sit back and go, okay, I went to the seminar and Chrisum gave me a Shakti pot. Okay, where is it? What's going on here? Hmm, it's been five minutes now. I wonder what's going on. You know, you can't, if you haven't been doing the safeties or you haven't been practicing any of these protocols to accept or to expect an instant uh, blowing off of the top of your head, you know, is, is really, uh, you know, an incorrect assumption to make because there's no way I'm going to blow your head off. I would never, ever, ever do that. The closest I did was in the, the second seminar, and that just, I'm not going to do that. that. That can really wreck your world because you have no idea, you have no idea what it means. And for those of you that really want that type of a scenario, I suggest you go somewhere else. I will take you and I will help you and I will teach you and I will I will give you as much of the gift as you're able to have at that time, but I will not uh, debilitate you by blowing off the top of your crown chakra. Not going to happen. Okay. Um, 
the more you give into this equation, the more you practice the safeties, the more you you, you practice the, the instructions given to you uh, by a teacher, if you have a teacher, the more you really, really, really pay attention to your kundalini, the greater the gifts that will flow within you. And as those gifts flow into you, part of the gifting is the transformation of the five bodies of expression. So you'll begin to, shall we say, quicken the molecular spin of the atomic structure around you. Okay, this this is this is called taking heaven. This is the this is putting the body, the entire body, to a high spin ratio. Some of you, you know, you 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 know about the monatomics and the uh, white powder gold and um, you know some of the other white powder metals. Uh, what that means is that through a chemical or an electrical or a, a high high temperature process. Pure gold has been reduced to a, a kind of a, a tan white powder, and, and, and it, it, it's in a state of high, high spin molecular uh, spin, and, and it's very, very fragile within that state, but people, you know, they'll stick it in a veggie cap and they'll eat it, and boom, you know, it's going to take them into areas that, uh, that are very, very uh, profound. And these profound areas, you don't need to ingest white powder gold. I don't suggest you do it. Let me say that again. I do not suggest you take white powder gold simply because you have no uh, refinement capability. It's just basically the the embryo wanting to become, you know, the adult in one in one uh, fell swoop, and that's just not really really uh, healthy for a person. You have to go through the refinement process. You have to begin to work with the ego. You have to accept a level of repatterning within yourself. Within yourself, based upon those aspects of yourself that, that come to the fore, which the, the kundalini will bring up as you begin to do the forgiveness, as you begin to do the tolerance and the patience and the compassion and the service to others. Kundalini will bring up these areas for you to look at within yourself. Not necessarily stuff that, that I'm saying. It'll be stuff that's just pertinent to your equation. If you've been having a hard time with life lately, you know, I mean, family members are attacking you or work, you know, the workplace is attacking you, uh, you know, and you're struggling to, to maintain your calm or to maintain your serenity. You know, I want you to... Look at this idea of repatterning how you respond to these adverse events, to your serenity. And you're going to hear my computer. It looks like the fans are turning on here. So you want to look at these. How you respond to this is really uh, one of the major aspects of the testing that the Kundalini gives. Okay, do they respond angrily? Are they throwing things? Are they pouting? Are they crying? Are they what are they doing? How are they how are they responding? How is my Kundalini child responding to these to these events that I'm sending their way? And and part of my job is to is to help you uh, choose a a shall we say, a more appropriate response than, than what your ego might want to bring up, okay? You know, you know uh, responses that are outside of grudges, outside of anger, outside of crying, outside of being petulant, outside of being revenge-oriented, outside of responding in a way that is hurtful to, to the other person who, or the people who may be doing it, but also to, the, to themselves as an individual, also to their family, and if they have kids, to their kids. I mean, you have to begin to repattern these areas of your life. And if you're being given difficult, uh, difficult situations that are coming up in your life, well, this is an opportunity for repatterning. Uh, some of you may know, uh, I asked Amelia to go in the, you know, like, like at one or one in the morning or, or later at night and it'll be lashing rain, as she likes to say, lashing is kind of a, an Irish thing. I'm not quite sure why. But anyway, lashing rain and, and I'll have her go into a dark, dark forest. A forest that surrounds a, a bog. And if any of you know what a bog is, a bog in Ireland is a very, very ancient 
place uh, that goes back to primeval Ireland. And, and they're so fortunate on their property there, or right next to their property, they have this bog there. And there's there's all kind of spiritual entities that are that abound in that forest. Even though the forest, it's a man-made forest. There was never a forest there before, but it's a man-made forest. And I have her go in there. And I have her sometimes go in there without a light. I want her to go in and I want her to begin to to really trust the Kundalini, to really surrender to the Kundalini, to really obliterate her fears, obliterate her concerns, obliterate uh you know the the idea that that somebody might discover her there or that, or that uh you know you know some sort of untoward event may happen and she does this she always does you know amelia's really you know she really 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 uh you know comes out uh like a rose i mean she she is very capable at this right now and and it's and it's really going well with her another one who is exceptionally good at this is magdalene de deus you know you guys Go on to the Facebook page and read what Magdalene de Deus puts out there. Read what, what, what these people put out there, and you'll really see a level of sanctity within their words, a level of understanding, a level of kundalini in every syllable, in every letter of the words they're writing, because they have taken the time, they have done the work to repattern, to reprogram away from what their normal egotistic response would have been in, say, an unawakened state. And so, you know, these are just two examples. There's plenty of others. Plenty of others. I mean, I, I, I could sit here for the whole two hours naming names, right? But I'm not going to. But, uh, you know, this is the level of surrender that we're looking at. I'm not looking at BDSM, which means, let me remember, it means bondage, domination, sadomasochism. That's what it is. Bondage, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, I'm just trying to guess here. Bondage, domination, sadomasochism, and, and you know this this is really a, a pornography of of uh, ego based domination and the infliction of pain and the the enjoyment of having a person at your feet and at your uh, what do you call it uh, at your mercy so to speak and uh, you have the power of uh, you know, inflicting tremendous amount, amounts of pain upon them. There's a movie out there right now called Fifty Shades of Grey, and this has nothing to do with the Kundalini. This is just pornography. And, you know, within a Kundalini context, I wouldn't even go near the movie. I mean, if you want BDSM, I mean, jeez, Louise, save, save the 10 bucks and just go on the Internet. Okay. Then I only bring that up because some Kundalini teachers on the Internet... Uh, engage in that practice and, and call it normal and call it, you know, that it's it's a it's a good way to teach a person about Kundalini. Well, I, I don't agree because it, it it locks a person in the lower chakras. It locks the person in into the ego and it begins to to formulate around the ego uh, ideas of domination, ideas of control, ideas. and so it makes it that much harder for that particular person to break out of that. And that's only the person that's inflicting the damage. Let's talk about the person receiving the damage. Well, through the through the the hellacious amount of pain that they're receiving, that is is stamping them into into uh, a corner, stamping them into and and through the pain, it's it's a forced molding of 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 uh, you know. Oh, what's the word? <laughs> A forced molding of of, uh, of of a type of surrender that really has nothing to do with the Kundalini. Okay, uh, Kundalini surrenders to to the to the energy itself, to God, to the to the outside teacher, or the flesh teacher. That's a very very different deal. It's a very very different deal, and it's far more an internal to external expression rather than an external to internal expression. And I'm going to bring Her Holiness back on. I think I've covered that somewhat. What do you think? <laughs> yes, Chris, I think you have covered that indeed. Shall I, shall I go on and ask another? Please. Okay. 
there are a few. So the first, the next one that popped up here is um, a person with awakened Kundalini wrote about experiencing the repetition of a tune, and it was accompanied with some words that flow out of her mouth in an unfamiliar language. And you know, it took her some courage to share that experience, and she was seeking, you know, thoughts and an understanding of of why this would be for her. Could you say something about that? You, you said something about chills? No, let me say it again. No, she has had a repetition of tunes, you know, a tune of a song. Oh, oh, I see, a tune. Yeah, and some, yeah, tunes, that's my accent. <laughs> and sometimes accompanied with words, you know, unfamiliar words come out as well in a different language. And they come out of her mouth. And so she was just wondering, you know, could you, well, could you say something about that, Chris? And I've had that experience as well, and I think other people have had it. Um, so I think it would be beneficial if you could, please. All right. So Kundalini will tie you into, into areas of experience that you have had uh, in, in other pursuits, shall we say, other life expressions. That's one a vector of something like that occurring. Another vector would be uh, having an entity, you know, tie into one of your chakras and broadcasting a certain song or a certain language into that chakra to the point where you're able to discern it, certainly during this, you know, during the dream state or during a trance state, uh, that could occur. You know, there are various reasons and vectors that this might occur for a person. Uh, sometimes a teaching uh, is given just in syllables and vowels mixed together, such as the word kundalini. Well, if you've never heard of the word kundalini, you know, there's a whole litany of prayers that the word kundalini represents, even though you won't, you won't be able to, you won't find that. You know, uh, some people will say that it is that which is coiled within or, you know, cave dancer, or, you know, some of these other meanings of the word kundalini. The big ditch was the latest one I heard, which kind of made me laugh. <laughs> Why don't we call it the, the Great Canal? I mean, you know, uh, the Sanskrit language is, is, is well known for having been composed of different prayers. So when I do the, uh, the prayer for those who are listening to this in their sleep, the, it's, a, it's a prayer uh, of removing blockages using the elephant god or Ganapati Ganesha uh, to, use, uh, to, to use that force. Uh, to help remove blockages to people who are dreaming so that they can receive their kundalini instructions as they listen to this program in their sleep, which I will say right now, simply because it's come to mind, and I'm going to go ahead and, and just take that moment right now. For those of you who hear this in the sleep, let that prayer remove the blockages that you may have acquired during your day or during your night or during your life. Let the let the contents of your kundalini come forward. Let the wisdoms of grace permeate your soul, open beyond the ego as you traverse the transcendental states during your sleep. And so, and so uh, as the people begin to mouth these syllables, these syllables begin to change the frequency of the energetic response of the kundalini within them. It doesn't have to mean anything to you. As you as you surrender to your kundalini, as you surrender to the words that are coming through, as you surrender to the to the uh, to the music that is coming through you, uh, certain levels of change are occurring. Certain levels of memories may be reoccurring. Certain levels of evolution 
uh, may be happening to you. Uh, I've been getting visions about uh, Elizabeth's seminar in Washington State, where the Kundalini is, is, is indicating more, more singing, more of a of a vocal vector of Shakti Pot. Just to to share a little bit about that, and so you know, of course, I've been hard at work uh, putting putting together, you know, certain uh, certain combinations of sounds and words and melody that will allow the vector of Shakti Pot to be given. Okay, and uh, and so the Kundalini will do this. Sometimes, as in Gopi Krishna's case, you'll just be start speaking a language that you've never ever had come to you before. Gopi Krishna was writing poetry in German and in French and in English and in other languages that he'd never spoken before. He was a Hindu guy. He spoke Hindi with some Sanskrit. Okay, so Kundalini has the ability to to uh, bring higher levels of consciousness through the individual. And you notice Gopi Krishna was writing poetry. He wasn't writing business contracts. Okay, that wouldn't have occurred. Okay, he was writing poetry. And as you, uh, for those of you that have the Kundalini awakened within them, you'll know that, that poetry just seems to flow with the Kundalini. It's a way of communicating. It's a way of, of, of allowing grace to 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 uh, join itself to the spoken word because there's feeling in it, there's visuals in it, there's 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 levels of of divine expression that come through uh, poetry. Look at uh, Rilke, R I L K E. Read some of Rilke's poetry. Uh, read some of uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, Rumi's poetry. Rumi has a lot of that in his poetry. But so does Rilke, Johannes Rilke, something like that. His poetry is also very, very, very stand out, you know, in a, in a very Kundalini way. Uh, so understand that you will be given teachings along the levels of, uh, and vectors in ways that you have never, ever thought would come your way. I mean, how many of you would think that, oh, my gosh, you know, I'll be, I'll be writing poetry in Swahili tomorrow. How cool is that? You know, it's, <laughs> it's not. It's not a common form of learning, and yet Kundalini is not a common energy to have. And so as you have this come forward through you, feel your discernment first. Feel if it is coming through your Kundalini. The Kundalini, as it did with a political person, it will let you know in pretty, pretty soft or, 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 or abrupt terms uh, that this is from the Kundalini. If, if there is any other kind of form of malignancy or maliciousness or, or you know, immoral type of scenarios, uh, you need to discern that as well. And if you feel that, well, you just change that channel. You just change that channel. That's just a test of your discernment. And as I was saying to one of my students uh, earlier today, you own your space. You own your space. You own your body. You know, no entity, no ET gets to have control over you. I don't care how many government vans are following you around. Okay? You own your space. You own it. And you claim it. And you take it. You have seniority over everything that is behind your eyes and, and from the top of your head to the bottoms of your feet. You own who you are. And that's, that's final. Nobody gets to take you over. Nobody gets to use you. Nobody gets to siphon your energy. Okay? I hope I'm clear on that. Am I clear on that, Amelia? <laughs> yes, Prism, you're clear on that indeed. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, can, yes, you are clear on that. Yeah. I remember... For myself, when I had um, you know some tunes and words sing out of my mouth, it it was Sanskrit, but I had no the Kundalini didn't I didn't need to understand what it was. And when I would have heard Sanskrit words from you and um, and other Sanskrit words, I would have gone into bliss. I remember that at the time it was 
and it was a communication from the Kundalini, and I totally understand what you're saying about it, the, you know, the changing of the frequencies within within. Um, an interesting thing that happened for me too was um, out of the blue, sometime later, I um, discovered that there was a Sanskrit um, class, a language class available in an Irish city. Um, which was quite amazing how that came about. And, um, of course, with Kundalini guided me to that information in the first place. But, um, yeah, so the Sanskrit um, language was part of it for me very much at the beginning as well. Well, there you have it. There you have it. The Sanskrit is a very, very holy language. Uh, mm. it's, it's poetry itself. It's poetry, it's music. It's prayer all wrapped up into a language. And and it's considered a dead language. The civilization that developed uh, the Sanskrit language, the Sanskriti people, no longer exist as a civilization. Uh, their oral history has outlived them by about 2,000, maybe even more than 2,000 years. Their oral history is what is remaining of the Sanskriti people, and the language has outlived the civilization. The Hindi people now that that that, that partake of, of the Sanskrit people as their ancestors are completely different within within their understandings of of spirituality, their understandings of grace. Uh, the Rishis. The, the the people that that authored the Rig Veda and some of the other Vedas, uh, they no longer exist within a within the continuum of time that we have that we're operating from right now. Of course, those who are you know the, of the Rishis who became Kundalini awakened, you know, you step outside of time. Mm -hmm. Time no longer exists for those who are no longer part of that continuum. It is a stream. It's like a river. You can step out of the river. Okay. And when you step out of the river, you step out of time. And so in that context, the Rishis are very much alive and they're very much, uh, you know, doing what they're doing. Okay. So, yeah, no, I think that's wonderful. That's wonderful, Amelia. Next question. Well, there's, there's been a discussion about UFOs, and you've mentioned it there, and I put down three questions that came up, Prism, so I'll just read those all together, if I may. No, no, no. One at a time, please. No? Is that okay? One at a time. One at a time. One at a time. Okay. How do you stop UFOs from following you around everywhere? Well, because the UFO, the, the intelligence that is... That is uh, shall we say, following a person. You know, it, it, it's not just people that have free will, okay? They, you, can, you can follow around a mosquito if you want. The mosquito's not going to be able to do too much about it. You can follow, a, you know, the hunters, you know, the hunters that just love to kill things. You know, they track deer, they track the bear, they track the, the animals that they want to kill. Uh, wildlife photographers, they do the same thing. You know, they follow the herd. They, 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 you know, they get as close to the hyenas or the lions or the zebras or the, you know, the, the, the you know, of the animal that they're interested in. And even though they're just going to take a picture of it, to the animal, if the animal had like a, a human, uh, within a human context, it'd be going, oh, my God, did you see that thing? It was, it, it, it looked like this really big eye pressed up against something's head. And it's following me. Oh, and it makes these little clickety sounds. It's so weird. <laughs> so you can imagine how the animal would feel, if, you know, when we follow them around with, with a camera. Or when, you know, as we drive a car past or, you know, any, any of the things that we do with the animals uh, is just as easily done to us by an intelligence that has a, a greater level of technology. And a lot of people, as I've said, a lot of people that have kundalini attract a lot of attention because it's not common for for uh, physical organisms to be able to go from zero to divinity. Okay, humans get to do that. That's part of the 
that's part of the, shall we say, the reward of going from the, the you know, a lower primate, uh, you know, a person that's just interested in sex, drugs, and rock and roll, right, and, uh, and just, you know, breeding and, and consuming and breeding and consuming into a, into a person who is, who is, you know, incorporating some of those themes, but also bringing in higher concepts of, of, uh, of spiritual transition, of, of religious uh, discipline of uh, you know and then you know moving on up into meditation and moving on up into into some of the higher chakra expressions over a series of lifetimes you know just because you you know you have the body and you died it's not a one time gig you know sometimes the contract is is for the whole human expression which means that you will stay locked into this game until you graduate from it. I.e., however many lifetimes it takes for you to come into the grace of the divine, then that's what it will take for you to come into the grace of the divine. And that is when you get to exit the game. That is when you no longer have to live another lifetime. That is when you can move on. Now, within this this process of, of, of coming closer and, and into a greater level of divine interaction, you're going to attract entities that that don't necessarily. First of all, you know, one of the things they can't understand is why anybody would want to go into such blindness. Why anybody would want to 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 only have five, possibly six senses. Uh, and sacrifice all the other senses that 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 are that are that are able to be utilized outside of the human uh, the the frail f r a i l the frail human systems. Oh my gosh, why would you do that? You know. So there's a lot of interest that a person with kundalini has because a person uh, with the kundalini is at that flowering point, that point of flowering that that has taken so many lifetimes, so many lessons, so much uh, 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 human expression to gain. And then, ah, here they are. Here they are. Now they're, they're starting to flower. Oh, my gosh. This is the divine unity that is occurring now. And that, that, that generates a lot of interest in, in not only spiritual entity, angelic entity, but also of uh, UFO types of entities. Uh, the UFOs have been with us for a long, 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 long time. Who do you think put the uh, put those animal images in the uh, in the plains of Peru, the Nazca plains? Okay, it wasn't the Incas. I got news for you. Who was it that that drew those lines on the Nazca plains? Those almost like uh, airport type of lines. You know, it wasn't the Incas. They didn't have that technology. They walked in to the technology that another race left, left there. Okay? So you might consider that if you ever go to Peru and you go to uh, Cusco and you look at the Inca wall there and you say, oh my gosh, it's so precise, it's so perfect. You know, Inca didn't build that. They walked into that technology. Now I know I'm stepping on a lot of toes here, so my apologies if your feet are hurting. Uh, but go there, go there and start looking with your kundalini. Open your kundalini eye, the, the triple eye that you have, the eyes on either side of your nose and the eye right above it, the trinity eyes. Look, look at, at uh, you know, archaeological evidence with all three eyes and you'll understand what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, uh, with regards to E.T., they've been here for so long, and they're watching. There's one guy uh, down there in L.A., Los Angeles, United States. And uh, he, he's a, I believe he's a native Ecuador, uh, Peruvian. And uh, he was walking in the Himalayas one day, and the E.T. actually made contact with him and awakened his kundalini. Awakened his kundalini. And then, you know... Uh, Helped him to to learn how to live with it, and to be with it, and to do you know things like that. And 
And now he has this big group of people down in Los Angeles that take trips down to the Andes to make contact with the ETs. I forget his name. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe not the way that I would go with it because I don't necessarily uh, uh, want to have any kind of a, of, a, of an attachment to ET. I could understand that if they activated somebody's kundalini, well, then a great level of appreciation and, and gratitude would be given towards those ETs for that type of a situation just by virtue of the level of divine love that comes through a person when they have that spinal sweep and so on. But but uh, I don't know that anybody else has been uh, activated that way. Uh, once again, I you know I feel that the best way to activate is is through refinement, refinement of the soul, as as uh, somebody else was calling it the the fire, the the crucible of fire, or something like that. You know, uh, to to open it up, the refiner's fire. The refiner's fire is what they're calling it, which is quite appropriate. It's, it's a very appropriate term to use with regards to the kundalini. And that is the way to come into the kundalini. And, you know, one of my students, you know, they, they've gone through Christianity. They've gone through certain forms of Buddhism. They've gone through these different levels of understanding. And it has, and it has really augmented their kundalini awakening experience. It has allowed them certain levels of freedom because they've already undone a lot of the ego programming that has occurred. And they're able to follow their inner guidance. They're able to do this type of a, of a, of a teaching, to receive this type of a teaching. And, and uh, they're doing very well, very, very, very well, as can you, any of you who are listening to this. In the archives right now, those who are sleeping, those who are on the chat room right now, anybody can do this. This is not outside of your ability simply because you're hearing this information. I'm not very well known. It may seem like that because on Facebook and whatnot, but I'm not. Jeez Louise, you know, look at how many groups are on face Facebook. I mean, like, you know, come on. So, so you can do these things. And these entities, these ETs, uh, you know, just like the giraffe isn't going to do anything to take away the human photographer, neither will we be able to take away from those ETs who want to follow our progress as we have the Kundalini. The best thing you could do is ignore them, just as I have you do with the entities. You take them out of your level of concern. You take them out of your space by changing your perspective and, and the amount of attachment that you have on their presence uh, within, your, within your equation. They're just learning about this. Sure, they got a great high technology. They can float around a little energy ball. BFD, if they were really brave, if they really wanted to know, they'd take a human body too, from birth to, to ascension. But they're just chicken, or they're lazy, Okay, a lot of entities just refuse to do it. You know, they're just going to sit there with their camera and they're just going to take pictures and then make their interpretations based upon what they observe. But for the real understanding, real understanding of what it is to go from zero to ascension, you have to do it, not watch it. You have to do it, and it is there for all of you to do. You're sitting on your enlightenment if you're sitting right now. Okay, did I answer that well enough, Your Holiness? You did. Yes, you did. And you kind of an answered the next one, which was, are they attracted? Are UFOs attracted to a person's kundalini in the same way as entities are? Well, they're attracted but to the energetic signature. They're attracted to the... They want to try to... Some of them... Some of them want to try to figure out a way to use divine energy to to work with their technology. Okay, um, there's a woman out there. I don't know if she's still alive or what, but she wrote something called the Prism of Lyra. The Prism of Lyra, L Y R A, P R I S M of L Y R A, Lyra. Her name is. Melody 
Roberts or something like that. But the Prism of Lair is the title of the book. It has a Mike Kundalini led me to this book, you know, in an old bookstore. You know, it's all they're selling off all their books because they were going out of business. And uh, I uh, Melody 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 Royal R O Y A L, and it's a pretty good description of how things are going with ET out there. And I don't usually go with channeled information, as many of you know. I am not fond of channeled information, but Mike Kundalini gave me a pretty good boost uh, to read this one. I was I was I was given to read this one, and so I read it and I absorbed it and I looked at it and I related to how it is here uh, at this current time. There are a lot of ETs that are visiting here. Certainly, as you go down to John of Gods down there in Brazil, I mean John of Gods, John of Gods, Casa de Dominacia, the house of Saint uh, Ignatius down there in Abidjania, Brazil, is basically right over a big... I mean, people have seen the ships go into the side of the hill right there. I mean, this is in the Mato Grosso. It's kind of way out from anywhere. And, and uh, you know, they have the main highway connecting it with Brasilia and with, uh, with uh, uh, other cities to the east. But uh, John of God, you know, I mean, they go right on in and... and it, it, there used to be a picture hanging up on his wall that they took down, and it was Christ. It was a picture of Christ, and with a giant spaceship behind him. And as I came down there, I've been down there three times now, and as I came down there, I literally saw E.T. Uh, E.T. takes the form of, of, of saints in the Catholic uh, tradition, because most of the people that that are there in Abidjan are of a Catholic persuasion. And so these ETs take uh, the position of a saint, you know, Saint Ignatius or, or Saint uh, whatever the heck, right? And they come in there as healers or they, they disguise themselves, say, as a, of a, one, of the, one of the ETs that I worked with was named uh, Dr. Augusto. And that's how he would say his name. <laughs> Soy Dr. Augusto. And, uh, you know, very, very tall, very, very kind of thin, wearing, uh, you know, surgery gowns just to, to hide most of their, of, of their physique, about 14, 15 feet tall. Uh, and, but they, I have to say, they do good work. They do good work. I received a healing in 20 seconds just out of testing them. I just wanted to test them, see if they were any good. And they're good. I gotta say, you know, if you've got something that uh, that your that the the MDs are going, oh well, you better get your affairs in order, uh, Chris. And I think you're you're not going to make it, and you know, you've got six months to live or something like that. You hop that jet down to Abidjanya and you play by the rules. I don't care if you're Catholic or Hindu or Buddhist or whatever your persuasion is. You go down there, you play by the rules, you say the Hail Marys, you say whatever the heck. I wasn't Catholic, but I went out and went down there, and I played it by the rules. And I, I received, I received, okay. And it was it was it was quite nice to to find a place where you could, uh, you know, some of the worst uh, traumas that a person can have, you know, like a like a um, oh. Uh, What's that word? <laughs> a growth on your brain, like a, a, a not an abscess, but like a growth on your brain uh, can be removed while you're standing up, and he's pulling it out with what looks like to be the the the, the tool you use to take hot dogs out of the boiling water. You know, he's just grabbing hunks of this tumor and pulling it out. Well, they got it on video. Which is the weird thing is because you're standing in line and you're watching these brain surgery videos and you're going, oh, my God, he's not doing that to my head. I tell you what, he's not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my <You> know, gosh. <laughs> sticking that stuff up your nose and then twisting in the hair. <laughs> you just kind of go, yeah, oh, not my I did that. <laughs> That's why I didn't tell him about my um, pyroid nodules. 
<laughs> Ain't gonna happen, I tell you what. I was getting pretty nervous. I didn't know, you know, whether once you're standing in line my first time there, whether or not you have to do it, right? And mm-hmm. I was going That's right. There's there's no way he's gonna scrape my eye with that rusty steak knife. <laughs> 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 And I have to say, yeah. you know, they're as good as their word. As long as you play by the rules, then, then you have a, a pretty good opportunity of getting rid of some of uh, or all of that uh, that death, death-invoking disease that, that you may have. And this is for, for those listening right now, but also those in the archives who are listening about this. And so these are all ETs disguising themselves as Dr. Augusto or, or St. Ignatius or... Uh, uh, what? Uh, King Solomon, they, you know, they, King Solomon comes through, and you know, but mm. a lot of goodness is done there. A lot, of, I have to say, you know, it's getting a little corrupt now because you know the the entities are beginning to, and I mean UFO entities are beginning to run the town, you know. So, so all the taxis have to charge a certain rate because La Enchidaje or the entity. The uh, the entity says, well, you can't charge more than this, this or that, and and uh, you have to go through us in order to, you know, and 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 the town is split in half because of it. And so yeah, there's a lot of uh, commercialism kind of corrupting the whole process down there. But but it, uh, I have to say, if you play by the rules and you and you and you forget about what you think you should be doing with regards to, you know, AMA-based medical systems, you can receive quite a bit. Yeah, and also, Chris, um, you know, when I was down there, um, my own Kundalini, there was a huge response in my own Kundalini as well when I was there. In, how, did it, um, how did it respond? What was, your, what was the response? Well, when we when I was there and I was sitting in the meditation room, I can't remember what it was called. Uh, there was this particular word for it, but you went in there. It was um, the, 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 the quarto, the quarto de enchidaje. Yes. Well, when the, I was in the there, the yeah. Yes, the kundalini within me, um, you know, radiated to people that were. I could feel that, and and went from me. Two people, that's what I mean. I could feel the kundalini in me when I was in the room on my own. And I think a lot of the visions and things that occurred to me there was um, through my own kundalini allowing that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was very, I, I, I enjoyed it. I recommend it to anybody. I mean, it's free. Yeah. All you have to do is provide your, you know, the airfare down there from the United States. I believe I, I was able to get a round trip ticket at that time for seven or $800. And I was working at that time, so I was able to earn that. And um, I don't know what it, what it cost you, Amelia, to go from Ireland to there. But a, a lot of people from Europe, from Scotland, from from Australia, from, yeah. from uh, the United States and, and Japan, and a lot of people go there to get those healings. There's a lot of Irish people go there, actually, yeah, through uh, uh, with can- cancer and, and different things. What was interesting as well was that, for sure, what you're saying about, you know, the hills around the cafe in um, Abidjan, I can't pronounce it, well, the hills around there, Definitely, you could feel a frequency that is very different to other places. I mean, it was definitely ET, a vibration. I mean, yeah. I was finding double terminated quartz crystals about three inches long on the ground. Mm. The, the place is riddled with quartz crystal. And I have this weird, this weird crystalline substance that when I was there, it would rain every day. It would rain every day at a certain time, like 2 o'clock oh, yeah. in the afternoon downpour of rain and and i loved it and i'd go out to the hill which is called the point and you'd see these rivulets of of glitter uh just flowing down the hillside and and i collected some of that glitter and i still have it to this day over here <laughs> not quite sure what to use it for <laughs> um, i have some as well <laughs> so, so yeah, so entity, yeah yeah entity doesn't have to be a negative a uh, UFO entity does not have to be a negative. It can be a very positive, uh, uh, grace-based scenario. Um, 
you know, there are, uh, uh, there, the Tao still exists outside of the body within the first two levels of the astral. The Tao exists, and there are entire civilizations that exist within the astral. And, and that group that is working through John of God down there in Abidjania, Brazil, is one of those uh, civilizations that are doing this. And, and uh, it is all basically towards the same goal that we're operating from right here. It is towards enlightenment. The reason why so much interest is taken with us is, is because we can go all that way from right here, right now. It's a big deal. You know, it's a big deal. You're going, you're going from, from physicality straight to divinity. You're bypassing uh, lower astral, mid-astral, upper astral, uh, uh, causal, mental. You're going straight into the divine. That's a big jump. That is a big, huge bridge. That's what Kundalini is doing. That's what uh, Apollonius of uh, Tirana was doing. That's what the Christ was doing. That's what Buddha was doing. It's a big deal. And for those of you that have it, the Avi, Fashti, you know, MJ, Madeva, Steve Jerky, Super, you guys are on this path. You should, you should just go kiss the mirror <laughs> in a non-egotistical way. You should be so appreciative of, of, of what is happening to you and the opportunity that you have. Really go back and listen to what I said about repatterning and really begin to repattern. Become devotional. Become totally surrendered to this. Let this dominate your expression, your life expression on this world. And if E.T. wants to follow you around, just, you know, ignore them. It's just like the photographer following the giraffe. <laughs> That's another question. Oh, it looks like we have a question. Here. What? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that might be Rosemary. Anyway. Um, Amelia? Well, you've, you've really answered the next one, I think, which was, is it possible that they want to communicate for a positive purpose or are they up to no good? Um, I, would say, I would say most of them are probably up to no good. If they're inflicting, <laughs> yes. if they're inflicting their, their presence upon you, knowing that it causes you fear, or, or anxiety, or concern, and they just don't care. To me, that is not a very advanced soul, or they're up to no good. It doesn't mean that you're automatically a victim because they can float around in an orange ball. Not mm. at all. You're not a victim. You're not a victim at all. You just ignore them. If they get too close, you know, tell them to leave. It's like flies or mosquitoes. Okay, and I don't care. Like one of the, one of the people, you know, they got a government van following them around, or a convoy of vans. You know, you know that's just the the those are those are the part of our government is controlled by UFO by ET. Okay, you know the black ops people, the people that that are that are totally beholden to those that own the uh, the uh, what do they call them uh, the uh, the grades, you know, the rep, uh, reptilians, that type of scenario. And there are good reptilians and bad reptilians and all of this. And one of the, uh, a very famous doctor was in the Amazon region one time and, a, and a, a UFO crashed. And, you know, this information has been squelched, but I'll go ahead and tell it to you here. And so the Brazilian Air Force was on it big time and Black ops people were searching for this crap because they wanted to the engineering. They wanted to to capture the uh, what they call an uh, extraterrestrial biological entity or an EBE. They wanted to catch that EBE and and uh, and either extract information or something like that from him. So the EBE was on the run, but it was injured. And uh, this doctor found the EBE, and it was a form of a reptilian, different than 
than some of the stuff that David Icke talks about. I think that's his name is David Icke. Um, anyway, uh, this EBE uh, was was telepathic with the doctor, and the doctor looked into the eyes of the EBE, and the EBE uh, transmitted this information. It said, you have no idea how powerful you are. You have no idea the level of of grace and ability that you have. You must look within. That is where your power is. And that was before he died. Last words mm -hmm. of that of that EBE. And so this is the Kundalini folks. This is what we're talking about. This is what that EBE was talking about. Apollonius of Tirana was, was raising the dead. Apollonius of Tirana was levitating. Apollo, Apollonius of Tirana was helping people. Apollonius of Tirana, you know, he, he had telepathy. He had all these qualities that, that many Kundalini people have as well. Just like the Christ. Tirana is spelled T-Y-R-A-N-A. Apollonius, well, you'll just add, I think that's A, A P P O L O N I U S. Look him up on Google. Okay. Next question, mm -hmm. my dear. Okay, well, can I just ask another question there about, about ETs? You're saying that there are good ETs and inverted commas and bad ETs. And so you're saying some, some ETs will come and observe us. And do others come then to um, experience, as it were, the kundalini because they can't have it and they try and intrude into our bodies? Do, no, do they well, do that? Other, other UFO-style entities actually want to possess the body. And I've had, had one person come to me uh, in the act of that possession and she was slowly but surely being taken over right in front of her husband right in front of her two kids and you know the kids would say mommy has cat eyes sometimes we don't know why and and uh, she was she was given to do some very very bad things she was given to lie she was given to manipulate she was given to to abuse uh, it, was, it, it turned into a very, very, very unfortunate scenario, and there was really nothing I could do. I was not allowed to extract that entity. It's terrible to watch that occur. And so some are here for absolutely malicious, evil, horrible reasons. And a lot of them hang out at the national level, the capital level. You know, a lot of them are infecting the presidents because you got to remember the presidents and the senators and the Congress people, you know, they're just regular people that have a little bit more ego than the rest and they want to lead the country, right? But they have no idea of spirituality. They have no idea of energetic dynamics. They don't even know about their own energetic anatomy. Mm. They're like little three-year-olds wearing a congressional badge, you know, putting their hand on the atomic switch. These entities are basically, you know, a lot of them are calling the shots in our national government. A lot of them. You know, Obama, you can't blame Obama. The poor guy is just possessed. Same with all of them. Go back, you know, you go back to, to, to Bush Jr., Bush Sr., Clinton, I mean, you name it. There's a lot of manipulation that's going on right now. Ebola is another manipulation. You think that just happened accidentally in Africa? And you think that they just accidentally ignored it when it came out in March? And here we are in October and everybody's going, oh, we waited too long. Well, of course they did. Of course they did. And then, you know, it sounds very conspiracy theorist type of things that I'm saying right here. But, you know, when you look beyond the veil, you can see the truth. And the truth is not always as the, uh, as, the as, as your newspaper might tell you. It's not always, you know, fluffy bunnies and cotton candy and 
uh, hot dogs and apple pie and the American way. It isn't that way for the most part. Okay? It's a predatory universe. Multiverse. It's a big aquarium. And you, you know, you have to, you have to stand for your virtues. It's the virtues, the noble qualities that, that allow you not to fall into the arms of disaster in this way. This is why I'm teaching people the noble qualities, the virtuous qualities. These are the things that keep you connected to the divine, the divine union. This is why it's so important for people with the Kundalini to, to go the moral, the ethical route. Even if it seems wrong or, 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 or uh, cliche or any of that, I don't care. You walk those ethical steps. You walk that morality as you know morality to be. Morality uh, for, for a Bushman of Africa is not the same morality as a Native American. It's not the same morality as an Aboriginal. It's not the same morality as somebody in Northern California. I mean, and you know, if you really want to stretch it, you know, the, uh, the morality of Irish. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> so the scenario is, the scenario is the, the safety protocols are far more that than you can even ever imagine. Now, I went up to Mount Shasta with the, uh, with the specific purpose of contacting E.T. This was in 1986. Took a week off of work, drove up there in my Datsun B210, <laughs> <laughs> parked outside of a bookstore now. So how, what's the best way to go up the mountain? Oh, well, you just got to go around the mountain and follow your heart. Oh, thank you. So I went up as high as I could go with the car, and then I started climbing a ridge, you know, and I came upon an, an unexploded uh, anti-tank missile that had been shot up there for avalanche control, and so I... I was able to to locate that, and then I took a sheriff's officer up to that later on. But as I continued my climb beyond that that missile, um, I went to about the 10,500 or maybe the 11,000 foot area, and there was a nice, a perfect little semicircle in the rocks there, a perfect place to just camp. I couldn't go up on the glacier because I didn't have crampons, and crampons are what gives you uh, traction on ice, and I didn't have that, so I wasn't going to... I knew I wasn't going to be able to go up to the glacier, but I figured, what the heck? Okay, I'm here. And so I went into meditation. I meditated, 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 meditated till about 3 o'clock in the morning. I meditated to, to contact E.T. And uh, finally I fell asleep. And I thought, well, geez Louise, you know, I guess they're not here for me. So walked back down the hill. As I mentioned, I, I uh, took the sheriff deputy up, and, and they took control of that unexploded missile. And... Uh, and I walked back down, and in the newspaper that day, that day's newspaper, uh, state troopers and sheriff's department, California Highway Patrol, had all reported lights flying around Mount Shasta that night. And so who knows? Maybe I'm really just an E.T. <laughs> <laughs> an E.T. with a beard. <laughs> Good disguise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you, you, um, you mentioned Ebola. So Ebola. Can I, can I ask about that? You said that um, groups that Kundalini can change its structure in the awakening person. Well, it Would changes. Would you speak it, a bit it, about it, that? It, yeah, if the, I the Ebola, any virus that the Kundalini doesn't want you to have will not have the deadly expression that it would have on another person. That's the bottom line. You can feel Kundalini change the expression of a virus within you. You just feel it. It changes the energetic frequency of your of the of the auric anatomy. It's kind of like the way you feel your skin, your arms, your legs, your hair, your eyes, the 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 inside of your mouth with your tongue, your 
your tummy as you're as you're digesting, or you know, say if you're ill in your tummy and you know you have to run to the bathroom, whatever. Uh, these 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 sensate uh, equations are expanded into the auric field, and so you. When I would work in the hospitals and I'd go into these into these uh, rooms that are, uh, or into the ceilings that are, you know, lots of lots of uh, of uh, viruses and bacteria because they never clean the ceilings in hospitals. Hello, everybody. They never clean the ceilings, and uh, and so all this stuff is kind of growing up there, and uh, you know, uh, MRSA and all of that stuff. I could feel the the Kundalini just reach out and change it. Reach out. You feel like, for me, it felt like a, like a, 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 like a ray of heat would just reach out and change it. I didn't feel a depth of it. I just felt that it was changed to a degree that it wouldn't affect me in a negative way. And this, you know, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's polio, whether it's Ebola, whether it's the measles, mumps, rubella. Uh, whether it is uh, um, um, uh, yellow fever or typhus or, or uh, you know, you name it. The Kundalini chooses whether it wants you to experience that. The further you go into grace, the better it becomes. This is the bottom line. The further you go into your kundalini, the further you surrender into your kundalini, the further you surrender to that teacher that the kundalini has given to you. You know, I'd say my students, right? Well, it's not really true. It's the, the, it's the kundalini that has chosen me as their teacher. So in that sense, yes, I can say my students, but but it's really the Kundalini. It's the Kundalini students. And as you go further into devotion, as you go further into surrender, as you prostrate yourself to the Kundalini, as you prostrate yourself to this to this energetic divine infusion within you, yeah, you're going to be able to beat almost any disease. But you don't kill it; it just changes. We got to get off of this whole killing idea. I wrote in the in the group the other day that you know divinity is what gave us the idea of ahimsa, do no harm, do not kill. Why do you think it's just like an, uh, all of a sudden kill our ego, you know, kill our lower self, our unihipili, as the Huna people say? It's not going to kill anything. It's there for you to train. It is there for you to work with. It is there for you to make the choice and lift the finger and do the work. And that includes giving yourself to the kundalini, giving yourself to that teacher, really opening yourself into this, this paradigm. Okay. Next question, my dear. Okay. Thank you, Krizem. Um Okay. So there was a question about um, Kriyas. It's very straightforward. Did she looking for us? Um, yes, why would Kundalini want someone else to see me have a career? Ah, why would the Kundalini want someone else to see me? Well, the Kundalini doesn't really care about it. Unless it affects your health, your safety, or your livelihood, the Kundalini, you know, you can have Kriyas in front of anybody. You know, it's, you know, they'll just think you're a little weird. Maybe you got a little spasticity. Oh, you know, they might have a little compassion for you. It's like, oh, oh God, look at that guy with the beard. Oh, God, what? Oh, my gosh. God, that must be something like Tourette's. You know, they have no clue. You know, so, so the Kundalini isn't really motivated by your modesty or, or that everybody should see you as a normal, perfect person. Uh, they can have question marks about, you know, your health or your, your you know, the, the your level of spasticity if it's a Kriya. You know, it's not concerned with that. It's far more concerned with with uh, having its its energy transform your physical system. Putting together that pattern of of response upon the, the body. So here's the, the deal. The Kriyas come. The Kriyas aren't just... The Kriyas put in to the body the platform that the kundalini uses to transform the body. Okay, I'll say that again. 
The Kriyas place into the body the platform that Kundalini uses to transform the body. Okay, everybody has their own timeline with the Kriyas. Some people will get over it in six weeks. Some people won't get over it in six years. Some people will be electrocuted every day of those six years, and some people won't even feel anything. They'll, they'll be put into to a yoga position in their sleep. Some people get a little bit of the boat, like me. Okay? So whether or not you place yourself in a position where, where a Kriya comes and it happens in, in front of other people, Kundalini doesn't care. You know, unless, of course, it's going to harm your life, harm your sustainability, harm your, your activities on this world that support the Kundalini. The most important thing is your ascension. How people think about you, that's not so important. Unless, as I said, it affects it affects your ascension platform. Okay, Kundalini doesn't have that kind of concern unless it uh, it affects you in a negative way. Uh, so, for instance, um, let's say I'm a professional driver for. Uh, we'll just say I'm a school bus driver, right? Well, the Kundalini won't necessarily let me have kriyas while I'm driving that bus loaded with kids. Okay. But as I'm standing around waiting for the kids to come on board and people are, you know, talking with me and, oh, there's a Kriya. Well, <laughs> that's a different story. Okay? It's a smart energy. It's a conscious energy. It is, it is self-aware and it is intelligent. It knows the person better than they know themselves. So, of course, it knows when it's appropriate to give a Kriya and when it isn't. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Um, the next one is about dreaming. It's not so much a question, but it's that, um, you know, in the group, sometimes we have dreams that are almost like movies, you know, in the quality of how we receive the dream. And so um, I suppose my question is, like, how are we to interpret dreams um, as being, say, symbolic and maybe being potentially real life happenings that are about, that are to come. How do we interpret dreams in that way? How do we know whether they're symbolic or potentially real life? Oh, I see. I come? see, like a prophetic dream, right? Yes. Yes. Is the prophetic dream real? Is it going to happen? Um, it can be. It can be absolutely real that it's going to happen. But there's another meaning. There's another meaning to it. Um, so let's just take that dream I think you're talking about. And, you know, there's a group of people that are uh, gathered together, you know, in, somewhere in the world. And and they're gathered together as a way of of, uh, of creating energetic change. So these are all Kundalini Awakened people. And they're gathered together as a, as a core group of manifestation uh, that is that is to give a specific frequency of manifestation upon this world. Uh, because uh, World War III or because nuclear bombs or because some sort of a thing is going to happen and, and the, the, the Kundalini individuals are gathered together to begin to, to modulate these, these changes, these transformations. I see no problem with that. I would like that to happen tomorrow. Okay? I see no problem with that. And when I do these seminars, that's exactly what is occurring exactly what is occurring. So for those of you that want to be part of that manifestation uh, uh, a change, the, the initiation of, of the Kundalini into the conscious expression of humanity on this world, then come to these seminars. As I said, uh, um, the next one's going to be in Minnesota. Contact Rosemary Goliath. Um, and her number is 651-452-3161. That's Rosemary Goliath. 651-452-3161. Or Eileen Laurel at 239-246-5608. And then one after that will be uh, Elizabeth Dalton Gonzalez in, uh, in Washington State. And uh, you can contact her uh, through me, uh, kfire for all at yahoo.com. And then possibly one after that in London. 
and then certainly one after that in Switzerland with Magdalene de Deus. And uh, once again, you can contact me, and I will forward that to Magdalene de Deus, and she can give you the information that you require to come to one of these events. It's very important that people begin to partake of the opportunities that the Kundalini is giving them to come together with other Kundalini people and initiate change for the better on this world. I encourage all of you to do this. I don't care if it's in the, the, the Himalayas or the Andes or the American Southwest or Switzerland at the top of the Alps. I don't care where it is. You know, I think we, ought to, we, we need to do this. And that goes for those of you that haven't had your spinal sweep yet. You're in the activation phase. That's just as important. Now, these dreams, you know, are they real? Are they, you know, uh, yeah, they're real. They're absolutely real, but they're not all about one thing. So, for instance, this particular dream that you're talking about, uh, this can just as well be about Kundalini people just coming together to initiate conscious spiritual change upon this world, regardless of what drives them there. Mm -hmm. And it can also be Kundalini coming together to to bring uh, bring an end to a to a nuclear evolved uh, game plan that that some entities want to run through and ruin this planet with. It's time. It's time to reach beyond your normal parameters of understanding and let this energetic, divine inner self begin to express itself through you. And if that means you've got to travel to the Amazon, well, then travel to the Amazon. Or the American Southwest, or Ireland, or Switzerland, or London, or you know Washington State, or anywhere else where the Kundalini people have an opportunity to gather together. One of the things we'll be doing in Washington State is putting our hands in the water and giving the oceans a Kundalini divine healing. Okay? The dreams are a form of direct communication bypassing your ego that the Kundalini makes to the higher mental functioning self. So take it seriously. Take it seriously. It's important. It's not being there just as a, oh, honey, it's just a dream, like my mom used to say. Not that at all. Not that at all. They're real, and they have definite messages to give to people. And if I knew more about this dream, I don't have it up in front of me right now, so I can't really comment on it to a great degree. But they're never just fantasies. They're never just, oh, well, you know, I had a, you know, like Scrooge says, oh, it was just a bit of mustard with a piece of bad meat that I must have eaten, and here's this goat. It's not that at all. Mm -hmm. It's not fantasy. It's not, oh, well, I have some work anxiety, and I guess I'm just working out the anxiety. No. You have Kundalini. Everything is different for you. You are not a normal five-sense controlled individual. You have a divine contact now. Everything is different for you. None of the dream interpretation books that you'll buy in Amazon.com or, or Barnes & Noble or any of the booksellers around the world will have the correct uh, opportunity to give you a Kundalini interpretation of your dreams. As far as I know, there is only one source for that, and you're listening to it. I do it all the time. You have to have Kundalini to, to, to correctly discern another person's dream state. You have to be able to tie into that dream. You have to be able to see it, feel it, know it. You can't read about it in a book. Next question. <laughs> I still think a book could be written, though, could it not? Written by somebody, yes. you know? Yes, yeah, yeah. It's there, you know. 
it would be great to see. Um, there's a question, a very practical question, but I, I want to mention it. It's about the five Tibetans. And on the groups, people were speaking about the difficulty that can, that can be experienced in doing the fourth Tibetan in particular. Mm. And somebody asked about blocks. Using blocks. You, can use, you can use yoga blocks for the four Tibetans. I don't, implements are not a problem with the Tibetans. I mean, if your your legs are too short or your arms are too long or your legs are too long and your arms are too short, it's okay. Just make sure that when you're starting the Tibetans without having ever done them before, that you only do no more than six. Six of each one. You don't start off doing all 21. That's going to give you vertigo. That's going to, and you're supposed to be dizzy. You're not, you know, with the first Tibetan, you're spinning to the right. You're supposed to be dizzy. Don't spot it like a ballet dancer does. <laughs> Whipping your head around and staring at that spot, then whipping it around again. You're supposed to be dizzy. It's supposed to happen that way. Let it come. And because the next Tibetan, you're going to be laying on your back anyway. <laughs> so, so it's not a problem. It's not a problem. And, and do no more than six when you're just starting. Let yourself gradually increase the Tibetans to the 21 point. Don't start out that way. You're just, you're just asking for problems. Could, could you say a bit about why um, we do the Tibetans? I mean, why do we do that particular practice? The Tibetans, the Tibetans are the equivalent of, of, uh, of micro kundalini stimulation and four pumps that bring it up. So as you spin clockwise... Microstimulation of Kundalini is brought up to the second because of the second Tibetan. Then it's brought, up. then the first, second, and third, and then first, second, third, fourth, and first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. So it's a series of pumps, pumping motions of the body that pull the energy up the spine. That's why we do it. Mm-hmm. We don't we don't get stuck. There is no blockages. It is an you know it is a very effective way of of uh, helping yourself. Have the Kundalini within a within a safety format because at the same time, as you do the five Tibetans, I want you to say, okay, I forgive my mom, I forgive my dad, I forgive my brother, or you could just assign five people to each one of the Tibetans. So the spin, you can be like, oh, I forgive Kristen for 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 being such a a mean teacher. <laughs> Never. I forgive him. So spinning around, you know, twenty one times or six times if you're beginning. Oh, I forgive Chris. And then the next one is like, oh, I forgive Amelia, you know, for misspelling words on the whatever site, you know. It's like, oh, I forgive that, you know. And then the third says, like, oh, I forgive my husband or my wife for, you know, you know, snoring last night, keeping me up, you know, that type of stuff. You can, you can, you can, you can combine them together, and I suggest that you do. Okay. Thank you, Chris. And. Um, Okay, how important is it for us to feel gratitude, you know, for everything that comes, even what we would perceive as being bad, you know, or difficult? How important is it to feel gratitude for that? It's it's very, very important. Gratitude is extremely important. Gratitude is a form of exalted love, just like forgiveness. And as this uh, love is exalted through a specific frequency of emotion, such as gratitude or compassion or sympathy or, or a devotion, uh, it, is, it, it is given into the body in such a way that it begins to actively change that body. It, it aids the transformation of the kundalini within the body. So be, have gratitude towards kundalini. Have gratitude towards the kundalini teacher. Really begin to... To, to be thankful for what is occurring, actively thankful. It's a very big deal, and this aids in, in your ability to surrender. This, this aids in your ability to give yourself even deeper and deeper and further. Some of the students you know, that I work with, you know, they, they constantly hear, hear me saying, come on, come on, you can go deeper with this. You can go deeper, deeper in your devotion, deeper into your, you know. You know, I'm constantly encouraging them to go further and further and further and further in this as I Skype with them. Okay? Constantly. Uh, is that true, Amelia? 
This is true indeed, Chris, and it is. Yeah, yeah, it is. And Go ahead. There's always more. There's always you. There is always more, um, which you know. Ha- if I was on my own without a teacher, I might not see. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. In in many ways, you know, part of the teacher's job is to drive the process further and further and faster and faster and deeper and deeper and more more into the areas of the ego than the than the person even realizes they have. But once mm-hmm. again, for a kundalini person, they must have an awakened kundalini teacher, and that that teacher needs to have a track record. That teacher needs to have been able to write about it, to speak about it, to, I mean, you know, the many different ways that 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 you can't just like go, oh, okay, you know, I guess I'll I'll trust, uh, you know, Swami Swami Johnson. (laughs) (laughs) Swami Johnson, that sounds sounds like a nice guy. I'll just go with him. No, be very careful. Be very discerning. This is not this is not light stuff that you're dealing with. This is transformative stuff. This stuff goes beyond lifetimes. Yeah. Very, very important that you that you have the grace and the gratitude, and you express it. Yes, and I just in terms of track record, you know, we also, like I say, with my journey with having a Kundalini teacher, the track <laughs> record becomes personal. And then I, as a student with that, with that, can also stand as a witness, if you know, for other people to say that this has been my experience too. And I think that's important. So you yeah, know, it's just so like doing- it's just like yeah, you can drag the teacher's reputation through the mud. My, you know, I've had my reputation yeah. drugged through the mud, but you can also drag that teacher's reputation through the radiance as well. Mm. It's just it's an it's a reflection of the individual about which way they choose to go with that. Yes, yes. Actually, something interesting, if I could just share it, Chris, and um, you're yes. aware that since about well late this afternoon, I began to feel quite unwell, and I had let's call it digestive upset. I mean, really unwell now. And um, your your comment about the bathroom with a referral to me and nausea and this. But the interesting thing is, as the program started, you know, and I've got waves of nausea and I'm hoping that I will be okay, I I am perfectly okay. And as the program has, I mean, from very early on, um, it has gone and I am completely relieved of all of those physical um, symptoms so I want to share that because it's actually been quite dramatic are you are you sitting down yes stand up go ahead standing up how do you feel perfectly wonderful <laughs> well I have yeah, to tell you uh, ladies and gentlemen she did she did she contacted me before the show she said you know Chris um, you know how you sometimes say that Amelia's in the bathroom? Well, that might be a real thing this time. And, and uh, if you see me go into the yellow zone, that means I'm in the potty and, you know, I'm not going to be available if you can help me out there. And, of course, I said, yeah, yeah, sure. And and, uh, and I'm not surprised that the Kundalini has reached into her and, and given her that healing. Mm-hmm. And it's the work same for any of you, any of you that are listening live right now, that are listening in the future. I mean, you know, so far I have Fasci, I have guest 1822, guest 2312, MJ Henderson, Ma Devasadvi, Steve Jarecki, and Suka. Hello, hello, hello. You guys have lasted this long. I just got, I just want to, that's a shout out to you <laughs> for doing that. But if any of you have any problems right now, this type of thing can happen to you as well. I want to say hello as well. I kind of missed him not having having the screen in front of me. So hi everybody in the chat room. And right. yeah, it's right. it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Now I want to bring. I want. I'm going to put you in the in the Shiva blue, my dear. I'm going to bring Rosemary on here. Hi, Rosemary. Hi there, Kristen. How are you? 
I'm I'm well, thank you. And listening. I've heard that about you. Yes, very carefully. And I have to say, I have my phone in my pocket, and when the the number one showed up, I said, "Oh my goodness!" It, it was just in the phone in my pocket. So thank you for not stopping to ask me for something I didn't have to say. So, so do you have any announcements you'd like to make? I do have the announcements. We have our seminar, next seminar planned by request, February 21st and 22nd at the same hotel where we were in, Feb- in uh, September. We'll be there in February, and Kristen will be here the week before. That's uh, like the 14th to the 20th, 21st, uh, speaking at different locations that Eileen and I are working on right now. And also, he's coming between now and then in December, December 1st to the 7th, to just do talks. There won't be a seminar, but there will be five places, six places around the cities who will have the opportunity, those of you in town, to hear Chrisom speak about Kundalini and the simple ways it it can be um, helping us through the holidays and what, what that meaning might be for us. Yes, so thank Christmas, you. Christmas Kundalini. I like that. I like that. It goes well together. Well, uh, thank you, thank you, dear Rosemary. Thank you for the announcement. And uh, give give Mark, your housemate, my blessing and and uh, a big big hug and a kiss for you. And thank I'll be you. checking with you later on so we can work out some more of those details. And I'm going to put you in the Shiva blue, my dear. Thank you. Okay, and bringing Amelia back on board here. There you are. Are you, there you are. still okay? Am I back on? <laughs> yes, prison. <laughs> I'm so grateful. I'm feeling, you know, I'm feeling very grateful. Thank you. Well, Thank you, you Kundalini. Really. It's wonderful. Right. Yeah. Your gratitude. Um, I have no other questions anyway, so we've come to the end of the questions, and I think we're coming towards the end of the show, are we not? We are. Yes, 3.51. I would just like to thank yeah. uh, Fashji and, and the guests 18.22 and 23.12 and MJ Henderson, Madeva Sadri, Steve Jarecki, and Sukha for, for, uh, for being here and staying throughout the entire program. I'm going to put you in on the blue there. I hear that echo. There we are. And I would like to uh, to say thank you, deeply thank you, uh, Amelia, for the excellent questions that you've harvested from our groups. I would like to say hello to to the people that are listening in the in the archives, and I'd like to say thank you to uh, Elizabeth Dalton Gonzalez, Eileen Laurel, Rosemary Goliath. Uh, Amelia Santara O'Connor, I would like to say uh, a, a special thank you to Magdalene de Deus as she prepares the Switzerland uh, <coughs> gathering. And I'd like to say a special thank you to all my private students who I will invite to listen to this to this broadcast of conversations with, with the Kundalini. And I'm going to bring Amelia back on for... Final goodbyes, Amelia. Thank you. Well, goodbye, everybody, and again, and thank you so much, Kristen, for the conversations today and the Kundalini, and um, see everybody next week. And I just want to say a special hello to John O'Connor, who is listening on his computer. Ah, and John. thank you, Kristen, and yeah. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. I mean... You're a big part of this, whether you like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely, John. So but thank you, Chris, and I look forward to next week again. Thank you. Thank you, Amelia. And thank you, everybody. Um, Ma Devasadi is bending her head in gratitude, and, and gratitude right back at you, all of you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for John and Amelia O'Connor for providing this this vital outreach tool to reach as many people as possible. And I want to say, you know, thank you to them, especially for this broadcast. Uh, Thank you to the people on the groups, on the Yahoo groups, on the Facebook groups, 
on the uh, YouTube groups and on all the groups that uh, that you know we're able to broadcast this information through. Feel free, if you would, to share this program. Share it on Reddit. Share it on Facebook. Share it everywhere you can share this. This this stuff needs to get out, and I just don't have the resources right now to do it all myself. So please help me share this program. There's there's no profit in it for anybody except for those who are receiving the gifts of the guidance that the Kundalini brings. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much for participation in this program. See you next week.